Welcome back to the show. Check out these headlines. Sam Bankman freed prison sentence. We're going to take a look at what they're looking for here. XRP trading on an exchange register with the U.S. Treasury, is it? We're going to get into it. How about Ripple's connection to the EU SEPA that just flipped the switch for ISO 20022? And how about Target 2 payment system? Ripple's in the middle of that, too. We got the big boys adopting tech quietly and proof of a three-letter agency that's controlling our corporate media. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show. You can follow us on Twitter and YouTube for exclusive content right now or digperspectives.com. Uh, it is a $2.71 trillion market cap and when the market is up 2% in the last 24, 68,200 plus for Bitcoin, 3,500 plus for Ethereum, 103.3 billion market cap for Tether and XRP at the number seven spot, 61 cents off by 0.6 in the 24 up by, or sorry, off by 1.8 on the seven day as well. Let's look at the range of price very quickly here. Ranging between 61 cents on the bottom, 63 on the top. Not moving around a ton a day today so far. We'll keep an eye on it. But I do want to tell you this. What is moving around is the 45-day countdown to XRP Las Vegas, ladies and gentlemen. And I just had a meeting with Perry Ann Boring about her uh, participation on stage and the Chamber of Digital Commerce as a whole. And let me tell you something. Cody Carbone is going to be on stage with us. And so will Perry Ann Boring. And so will John Deaton. And so will James Murphy, Meta Lawman. I tell you something, this is going to be remarkable. And so will David Schwartz. And we know in just what? Uh, don't even count today. So 19, 20, 21, 22. So in four days from now, we're going to see the permanent amendment of automated market makers to the XRP ledger. It is going to be an extremely important conference to come to and empower yourself with knowledge from the source, one of the co-creators. And I don't mind telling you very quickly here that DAI and I are picking one person to come to dinner with all of us at a private dinner to be named the location. And I tell you, this is going to be dynamite, ladies and gentlemen. You're gonna to wanna to come to this thing, but you have to buy a ticket. So this is the deal here. This is what we're doing so everybody knows. And what we're doing here, you must buy a ticket by the end of March. And then we're going to reach out and select somebody as a winner to come have a private dinner with all of us. And we already have some private members that we're going to pick from our Patreon groups. So this is going to be a lot of fun. And we like to have a really great time when we're in Vegas. So uh, get your ticket today and we will select somebody, and I hope it's you. I want to meet you guys. This is going to be a really, really great time, everybody. So make sure you get your ticket. And don't forget, too, by the way, click that link and get the discounted room right at MGM and stay on the property. It's a beautiful property. I love this place. Listen, it has always been my goal when I first set out to do this to ultimately graduate to a place like the MGM, which is just class right? It is the pinnacle of Vegas. I love this place. I've always loved this place. And this is a great, they have beautiful rooms and the property is absolutely stunning. There's so much to do. You can walk right to the conference. Everybody else is staying there. Get your discounted room before they're gone, right? And there's some merch you can get too with the link underneath the video. So let's get into this. I know that's enough, but I wanted to make sure you know, because I tell you, it's going to be a remarkable time. Prosecutors are seeking a staggering 40 to 50 year sentence coupled with an $11 billion fine for Sam Bankman Fried's alleged role in the spectacular collapse of FTX. I say that's great, but let's include his parents too. Let's not forget them. Now let's get on to this and we'll keep you up to date as it goes here. Uh, XRP trading start on an exchange registered with the U.S. Treasury Department, but I have to ask a question. Is it safe? I know. It sounds like, man, this is super cool, right? But then when I go down into the article, and it is true that it has been listed on Atlantis Exchange, which is registered with the U.S. Department of Treasury. However, I have to say, this is the part that stuck out here. Atlantis Exchange holds U.S. regulation. Atlantis Exchange is a globally trading platform proclaimed itself as the pioneering disruptive international exchange with cutting edge fintech solutions. The team asserts that the exchange is duly registered in both the U.S. Department of Treasury and the United Nations. Whoa, okay. 
Meanwhile, it's worth mentioning that some crypto market participants have cast doubt about the reliability of Atlantis Exchange. Specifically, there have been accusations labeling the exchange as a scam. Now, I don't know any of this. This is news to me. So I'm, this is not endorsement. I'm just reading the concerns that are being mentioned here. So with users citing difficulties in withdrawing their deposited tokens, these concerns have persisted over time. So there's some time in there they're saying that kind of gives validity to all of this. So be careful if you go to this exchange. So uh, therefore, XRP investors are advised to exercise caution should they choose to engage with the platform amid new listings. So that's what we know about it. And if it is that way and there is trouble in exchange, why is the U.S. Department of Treasury doing something? But nevertheless, let's keep going. We got a lot to go over and it's all fantastic. This is a reminder that yesterday is where the flip the switch moment of ISO 20022 took place for SEPA, which is Europe's payment system. Now, what's interesting about this is much like I said, when this switch, this flip the switch moment happens, I never expected price to move. And you know what? As it turns out, we were right, right? Because ISO 20022 has flipped a switch in Europe and there's no price change because it is a messaging system. But that new standard messaging system will allow for the coding and movement of digital assets along with that messaging payment right? That is what we're talking about here. So that has yet to be done. However, that new standardization has now been migrated to in large part. So that's the exciting news. It'll come because that's the reason they switched to it. Now, let me read down this from Anders right here. This is a great tweet about all of this. He says, it seems a lot of positive developments in relation to crypto is coming to the EU during 24, especially regarding three different developments. I think we have to take a look at all these pieces together instead of in isolation. And I believe it will be especially good for Ripple. Let me explain. Movement of SEPA to the 2019 version of ISO 20022 with SEPA, think of transfer within the EU. This migration is happening today, March 17th. Now it's full on today on Monday the 18th. This will allow for richer data, easier interoperability with other systems, etc. SEPA has an instant payment scheme called SEPA Instant Credit Transfer. The new regulations that will force banks and other PSPs, payment service providers, to offer instant transfers within the EU at the same cost as a regular credit transfer, meaning transfers to any other EU country that will take no more than 10 seconds, this will solve the last mile problem within the EU. Ripple especially has talked quite a bit about this issue. They even made a whole playbook about it, which we've shown here on the channel multiple times. It becomes a lot easier to make cross-border payments to within the EU if all transfers within the EU are instant. For example, you could then make a transfer to one financial institution that's located in the EU and in turn can pay out in any account within the EU in a matter of seconds. This is very good. This piece of regulation should start to apply by the end of 2024. Put one and two together. Absolutely. So. Going to number three here, EU becomes the first largest uh, first large jurisdiction having a clear set of crypto regulations with introduction of MICA. And it says here, uh, companies will be able to turn passport their services to the rest of EU by being registered in one EU country. For example, Ripple is registered in Ireland and will support its services to the rest of EU. Having clear crypto regulations is critical for businesses to operate. Regulations will apply in two steps from June 24 from December 24. As a whole, 2024 looks really good for crypto businesses in the EU. If you want to view a picture where we have all of this together, he has the IG link below, which I have right here, which basically you can see the region, but here you understand that they're clearly telling us it flipped the switch on it yesterday. So that means it is prepared to start integrating digital assets at its discretion. That's what that means. Right. Target to process 90 percent of value settled uh, by large value payments in euro. Well, wait a minute. I thought we said SEPA was the euro system. It is. These are two complementary payment systems that are different, but service the same EU region. 
Now, what's beautiful about all of this is we know that Ripple has the license in Ireland, which gives it access to all of the EU through the SEPA system, right? And then we also have this tie and connection here. I tell you, Smoke Dog has just been killing it and crushing it as hard as he can right here. And you can see that, that information we just read to you. Then you can see here the volume and numbers here. But what you're going to love about all of this is the next piece. And the next piece right here is this, is where you see target two and it all tied in, but then we go to this. And this is where you see Sia, which is tied into target two, which is also using Ripple, right? So we have that third party indirect connection to that payment system as well. This is getting so exciting. Think of this for a moment. There's a lot of people that are super discouraged right now because they thought that switching to ISO 20022 would be this price flip of the switch. And I never have believed that. You know, I've said that in all my videos, it doesn't necessarily mean price to switch to those things. And when they do start integrating digital assets in with the ISO 20022 standard and that change that's taken place yesterday and today, let's understand this. That doesn't mean they're going to go 100% into using those tokens and digital assets in that regard. They may use 3% to settle at first to make sure that these things are still working properly in live fashion as opposed to the simulations and pilots, right? So just something to keep a note here, but it's all going in the direction that I want to see. Even further evidence here, Ripple's tied into the TSA network gateway. Just one relationship that confirms how upgrades with new regulatory changes, emergent standards can allow Ripple to be used in payment systems like Target 2, cited right here. You can see it all right there. So more confirmation about Ripple being smack dab in the middle of this thing when they finally start using assets now that they're using the proper uh, messaging system to get it done. So this is huge. Now, so is this. And shout out to Digital Asset Investor who sent this and put this out and showed it to me. He put me on the trail on this. Ripple, our president, Monica Long, uh, joined the Newcomer Banking Summit in San Francisco last week with Team Jico and others. This was to discuss the change, what's changed since uh, the Silicon Valley banking crisis a year later, how blockchain and crypto can fundamentally improve the access to the financial industry. Well, who is Jico? We know the president of Ripple is Monica Long, and she's no joke, and she don't sit on stage with people who are a joke. And Jico is no joke either. Look at what Jico does. Jico makes treasuries bankable. We're a new type of bank built on U.S. Treasury bills to unlock yield, safety, and scale for you, your business, and your customers. Really? <laughs> uh, this looks super exciting to me. I got to be honest, built for built safely, built for scale, built better, right? You're talking about being able to custody your T-bills, right? And I think you're even talking about being able to spend them like cash and make it easier to use them, whether it's in your business or your personal life. We'll have to see as we get more information. But this is super exciting to me. I can tell you that. And I know DPMG knows why I say that. Uh, this is a last clip to wrap this up here, and this is a great clip. And I want you to hear what this gentleman says when he's asked about real adoption, and he talks about with the big boys, and I'm just going to put it here so you can hear him lay it out as he gets into it here. He's telling you adoption is happening, and they're trying to do it very quietly so the masses don't understand that. Perfect example of, like, adoption, product market fit, and... Unfortunately, for it goes below the fold in terms of the search engine headlines because everyone's so focused on just hardcore crypto stuff, whereas the, uh, call it, big boys are actually adopting the blockchain technology below the fold and quietly, but in big size. Yeah, I mean, I think to that point, uh, the... There you have it right there. Uh, the big boys is happening beyond the search engine. I mean, you know, this to me is like super exciting because I do feel like that's what we're seeing. We are at that moment where we are about to get some kind of government clarity and or adoption. And by the way, let's take a look at the ISO 20022 2019 version that's just been flipped the switch on. 
which really is adoption of not only that standardization, but the also the adoption of digital asset accessibility. It gives them the accessibility to move digital assets with that new standardized messaging system. So things are getting super close now, ladies and gentlemen. When we hear about them using stable coins and CBDCs, they all have to be launched before we can hear about them using it, right? And for them to be launched, we're going to have to have clarity. We know MICA does in EU. We need it here at home. Now we're going into the Freedom Zone, ladies and gentlemen. You can go to digperspectives.com and you can click the Freedom Zone and join and support the channel for almost next to nothing because today we're going into why the mainstream corporate media is so controlled and who is controlling it exactly. Not owning it, controlling it. We've gone into who owns it and proved that one. But today... We're going into the Freedom Zone, and you can too. I hope you'll join us, not financial advice from me or anyone else. Come on in. Oh, 